weekend plans, the price of a play date, and HVAC. All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. Hi, Amy. How are you? Where are you? What oh, are you? <laughs> it's a rip snorter, let me tell you. I, I want to know what a rip snorter in a snorter is. But first, what are you? Where are you? I am officially in Lower Delaware, which growing oh. up we would call Slower Delaware, which means it is below the midway line. And I am here for lacrosse for basically 12 days. So Holy shit, 12 yeah. days. Oh, wait, 12 days starting four days ago was a crazy heat wave here. What is going on there? I think we peaked yesterday. Oh, no. So they've been playing and they didn't draw the best game times. You would think that the earlier... Oh, shit. You would think earlier games would be spared yeah. from the worst of the heat. And it's still very, very hot. But when, you're, when your games are at 1, 3, 40, and 6 p.m., it's 97 degrees air temp. And they play on turf here at the Delaware Turf Complex. So turf kicks up oh anywhere God. from 20 to 30 additional degrees just because of the surface. It is black rubber at its core. And it absorbs heat from two directions, from above, from the sun coming down, and from the earth coming up. And it is, th their cleats melt. So it's very, very hot. It's dangerous. It's not great. There, It is a running game. So they are... Literally exhausted, overheated, superheated in normal conditions. This is this was and risky. in a crock pot. It's like risky. and they're in a crock pot at the time. So, right. So everybody is dealing with the same condition, and we're all doing the best we can, and bringing tents, and bringing air coolers, and bringing you know lots of ice sometimes to stand on the ice to cool your feet down from bottom and all the rest of it. But they get overheated. They get cramps. They get shit they shouldn't get. So. That also affects gameplay because everybody's tired. Everybody's hot. And one of the parents actually said it best. That includes the refs who start making dumb calls, who start yeah. making missing things because you're just too fucking hot. They've been there all day. Do they see like a mirage in the distance? I don't know. Maybe what a the fuck? lake that they want to dive like, into. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then you think to yourself, oh, it's a brain aneurysm. That's what you're doing. So, and then you go back. So I mentioned I'm coming to you live from in my bed chamber at mm -hmm. the home. We rented a home nearby where the turf complex is located. Nothing else is located. There's one hotel that popped up only two years ago, maybe because of the turf complex. It is literally right across the street. It is a, I'm going to pick the wrong one, but they're all the same kind of comfort suites. It's a Spring Hill Suites. Uh Okay. Uh, so you, everybody can think in your head, I know what that is. I've seen that. I know. I get I get a vibe on that. And it is $675 per night. Because it can be? Because it's the it only... Can be. And it's okay. sold the fuck out. You will pay less to stay in Midtown Manhattan. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You're not getting anything other than prime location. Because everybody else has to drive 30 minutes into Dover or Milford or other related places. So we got smart after coming for a couple of years and because we're from here and we're staying in a nearby community on the bay. It's called Bowers Beach. It's a it's a lie because the beach is the bay, but Bowers Beach. There's so we're on a little waterfront verbo that is six and a half minutes from the field. So it's nice. We've got a little oh, hot tub. Nice. We've got a dock. We've got we're steps from the local bar, so we get live entertainment every night that shuts down at 9 p.m. So it's perfect. Everything's perfect because it's a little tiny town. And they're like, this is fun until it's not. So get the fuck out. So it's perfect. Which is good for athletes who are there it's that good for should everybody. go back at 930 to rest anyway after a day of, I don't know, cooking. It is literally sweltering heat. Swelta, 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 swelta. So, but that's the way it is. So we're, we're probably a third of the way through. And <sighs> this happens to be a, a slow day. I think we have it's a matter of hours that we have off in between events that constitutes almost a full day. So there was no reason to leave, but technically we could have like left, spent all our time driving and come back. But that's another reason for the extended jaunt. So that's where I'm coming to you. And I mentioned I could have been in the van and you laughed. 
Well, so what van? I don't we're understand staying the van. here. We rented a whole home and we're here with another family we travel with regularly. And they, because they have multiple lacrossers at multiple ages, including a Division One kid up northeast, they purchased a conversion van. And that's not even oh. what you call it. It's it's. I'm not even sure. It's closer to an RV than it is anything else, but it's okay. probably it's probably 20 feet long. So it's you drive it around. It's not. It doesn't hook onto anything. It's its own independent deal. But you, the door slides open. A step pops out. There are screens everywhere. There's air conditioning. It has its own wire, wireless and router. Its own shower. Its own bathroom. Leather seats. Leather beds. Multiple televisions. Creature comforts. Refrigerator. Everything you could possibly want. Captain's chairs throughout. So it's a, it's wonderful to be able to step off the field and then just basically hang out in a mini hotel room wherever you so drive it with you so we have been spending a lot of time in the van treating that as a shared space because we're very lucky and uh i was thinking i might even go record out there but i don't want to run the energy just to just to have me sit out there run all the air conditioning and the wireless and all that stuff when i can do it inside so i'm coming to you from inside you can see my lovely bag of gear behind me it's super glamorous i took the time to uh get really gussied up for you i'm still <laughs> still wearing my pajamas my hair looks like i have been that put is through where a cheese grater going. yeah that is where i was going um as a secondary character if not primary character in the story of amy your hair plays a role it really does. And a tribute to the weather. Amy's hair is, is its, like I said, its own character. It is magnificent. It is straight. It has big, full curls. Or she goes out in the sun and the heat and it is curly. She's got thick, curly hair. I have a halo fro. I have all the things. I have all the. It is its own character. It's and true. I love it. So when I first saw her face open up on this app, which we use to come to you, I thought it's hot and muggy where she is, but she's comfortable in air conditioning right now. I, honestly, in my head, I can't get over w- what this group is doing to these boys. Like I really feel like so many things get canceled because of the heat index on top of the 97 degrees and the turf and everything else. It really should be, you know what? Afternoon games are canceled today. If we can move you all to the morning and we can get things done. No, you're shaking your head at me. They don't care about them that way. They don't look at them that way. They're still, this is just me talking. Any of the lacrosse friends and family who listen to this, I apologize in advance because you'll disagree with me. They don't, they don't look at them as teens. They don't look at them as growing people. humans they don't look right. at them as people they look at Ugh. them as gladiators just in the same way they do with college athletes just in the same way they do with professional athletes they don't treat them like people they expect you to use your body as a weapon as part of the sport as part of the strategy that you're bringing depending on your position you're going to be throwing your body into gameplay you know people who are competitive athletes get this and they're like yeah that's what it is of course it is so my son is playing through the world's worst, just to get gross. Let's be gross. He has a problem on the bottom of his foot. You okay. know you know dancers, and they build up a callus on the ball of their foot. Sure. You've heard about this. It's a thing. Okay. Of course. He, over the years, has built up a callus on the balls of his feet because he's constantly on his, that's his, he pivots like a boxer. You're on the toes of your feet. You move, you move, you move, you move. The def- defensive role is mostly about sort of springy feet, go, 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 right? As opposed to sprint, sprint, sprint. You're kind of constantly bob and weave. So Whole he has foot, right. massive callus on the bottom of the foot. Over time, unbeknownst to him really, and therefore to us, he developed a blood blister underneath the callus. So... You can imagine a silver dollar sized blood bruise mark underneath the callus that separated the callus from the skin. So the whole thing popped and the whole thing came off. Oh, so is it raw yes. and painful right now? Yes, there's nothing there. It's just the, oh, the oh. actual uh, area of the foot is bruised and then there's raw skin. So, and there's nothing to be done for it. So we just tried to put cushions on well one of the cushions that we put on literally melted in the heat the the heat just um, whatever you call it broke down the glue and it just it melted off his foot it it's not that it became unstuck from sweat it literally there is no tack left it melted the glue in the heat so that didn't work so now we're just doing combinations of pads and tape and and you, wrap well you can't wrap it that tight either because you need flexibility in your foot and you need to be able to move your toes and spread you so 
He's dealing oh with all God. that, and he's basically just moving on. And I, the whole time, I'm like, bah, 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 bah. we have kids that play with broken ribs all the time. Kids that play that with, hurts too, with ripped, so much. ripped and torn legs and things. We, it's disastrous. We have kids who are questionable and still decide uh, they passed, air quotes, passed their concussion test and they're coming back. These are not decisions that, um, you know, the kids are involved because a lot of this is how you self-report, Right. So oh, okay. it's not like the trainer's like, yeah, throw him in there. We don't care. Snap his neck. Rah. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Snap his neck. <laughs> Everybody is at a heightened state. This is a high visibility moment. The reason that it is so ridiculous, people are probably thinking, well, why the fuck are you doing this? This is the equivalent of the SAT test. So for the next three straight weeks, we will be at this tournament and many others in Long Island, in Rhode Island, all the islands. We're going all the places, <laughs> right? Uh, Batshit Island. We're going to the mall. All the hot islands all out the hot there will be there. Yeah. Because like other kids, like every kid, has to take an entrance exam and an SAT test to get a baseline score for evaluation to uh, apply and be admitted to college to play sports at college, coaches come to these events and they are filling out their rosters. And this is the time when they're filling out the roster for the age and grade my child is. So this is his SAT test. This is his look. Fortunately, we've had no altercations from anyone. We've not seen any or heard of any. I'm also grateful that the older that you get, that kind of shenaniganizing destroys your college chances. College coaches want parents to not even drama be seen free. They, yeah, it's drama not free. it's you know seen and not heard for kids no sir we don't want to see you we don't want to hear from you we want your tuition and we want your kid shut up and get out that's it so if you make yourself visible or known even by clapping at any way at this point in the game it hurts your child which has been helpful because it shuts down a lot of the what are yeah. you fucking doing man? yeah 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 <laughs> sideline bullshit diminished yeah, yeah i yeah, like so that. that's so so i but the gameplay is also super aggressive and that's not for me. So I'm just, I'm managing it all. I'm not managing any of my hair. I wake up every morning and I, <laughs> I put on as much caloric food as I can for the boys so that they can just yeah. stuff it in their faces. And then, uh, you know, they go sweat it all out. Start again the next so day. So did you stop at like Costco, fill the house with everything or did you bring it all from home? Here's how remote we are. There is no Costco. The closest Costco to where we are is 45 minutes away. It's in Christiana. So to put it in perspective, there ain't no blink, Costco blink, in blink, Dover. Blink. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing. So we strategically did a Costco run and brought a lone cooler filled with items to get us through with the major bulk stuff and then just make everything up at a supermarket. But yes, we've we've run through quite a number of things already. Liquor store twice, you know, the basics. <laughs> the, the important basics. things the that basics. you need to get through. I, I'm still wildly in awe. I think... Two, three summers ago, we met you for one of these like fun tournaments, not the do or die tournaments sure. that you're sure, sure. kind of in now. Sure, sure. And I thought, hmm, it, it's hot out here. And I brought my cute little Starbucks refresher and all that ah, shit. And yeah. your husband was like, that's cute. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, what does he mean by that? <laughs> like, you know, like stopping at Starbucks. Anybody want anything? Like, yeah, no, they don't have what we need. And then I started to get it. But this is so intense. It is very. I'm impressed by, in all of this, okay, my big, I don't know, flag, green flag, is the maturity that happens when you don't see it happen. Somewhere, a light switch, and this is really what I wanted to talk about today, so you gave me this beautiful transition. Um, I really want to talk about the maturity that hits, okay, for your son, Right now, it is the understanding of what is required to achieve what he personally wants to achieve. You don't need as a parent, and now this is your youngest. So that's three kids who really get it, which, oh my God, and I have that right now too. So I, I know exactly where you are. Well, I tell know, me about it. I want to hear. Well, well, first, I want to say, I don't know when that light switch goes on maturity. Like there was a point where your youngest said, here is what I want. Here is what I need to do to get it. For a long time, our job has been like, do you want A? Do you want B? Do you want A? Do you want B? And there are parents who don't even say A or B. They say, the world is your oyster. Go out and go fuck yourself. But there is a point at which they realize they are in control of so much of what they want and how to get it. And that point is 
what I discovered. So now through your child saying, I am playing through pain, I have done a calculated risk of A, permanent damage, B, what I want out of this, what my body is capable of doing. And most people don't have that, what my body is capable of doing. So your son is three up on all of the others who have matured mentally in other ways. He's got a mental physical game that he's playing, which to me is amazing. You said use your body as warriors. And I thought, I was whining on the Peloton because by accident, I liked the music in a 30-minute ride and I only wanted to do a 20-minute ride. So I chose 30. It was like, what the fuck? So maturity-wise, okay, we were at a family wedding this past weekend, which was, I highly recommend. You went to that wedding your brother-in-law's wedding a few years ago, that is as close as you get to your party, right? You don't have to pay for it. Everybody you know is there, all of the friends, all of the family, and it's fantastic. But I got to talk to my husband's youngest nephew, who is just finished medical school, got crazy awards. We talked about this before, but he's a urologist, okay? (laughs) Officially now, right? He's a residency for urology. How the fuck do you go from a 15-year-old boy who no. jokes about penises <laughs> to being a urologist. Like, at what point does that light switch go off and you're like, you know what? Dicks all day. Like, this this is it. This is what I want for a living. How about my girlfriend's stepdaughter who's an esthetician? Well, she went to beauty school and she came from a party, party school life. To Now what you're doing is asking grown men to hug their knees so you can wax assholes. I know that is part of what you're doing. And wow. the maturity level had to spike at some point without going, I need a urologist to do this. What, what happens? How does it happen? At what point? Uh, I don't understand because there's still a 13-year-old, 15-year-old girl, boy, inside of me, don't read that the wrong way, that's still giggling at the urologist, that at the esthetician who is waxing sketch parts for women, for men, for like all of those things. I'm so impressed. I'm really curious how we got from the unprecedented level of adulting going on to achieve life's next plateau (laughs) <laughs> mirrored by spread eagle butt cheeks and some hot wax for a dude. I don't know any men who have had their <laughs> back crack and sack, so to speak, uh, manipulated in that way. But I'm sure they're out there, and she's probably highly compensated. So good on you. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, and another dog leg from what you were saying. It's a boob leg. Book ahead. Well, I happen to see, and I think it came to me today for this very purpose, unbeknownst to, to, to me, Jonathan, maybe, you know, Bridgerton, the oldest brother, Anthony. Yes. Whatever his real name is. Jonathan yeah. something. Who cares? Go ahead. He did a brand partnership with Lueve, and it's a shirt. He's crazy gay, if you don't know. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's he really loves it. Dicks all day. All day. So he did a brand deal with them to raise money for somebody. And it says, drink your milk in the got milk font. White t-shirt with kind of like a very pale drink your milk, almost white on white. Really cool. And then up at the collar, it has a whole bunch of dripping milk as if coming down from the collar. Drink your milk. And the other brothers from Bridgerton were all wearing this shirt out in support of him and his brand deal. I know the face. I know the face. Um... Drink your milk. Drink your milk. Dicks all day. So I'll, wow. just, I'll, just, I'll just leave that there. Hey, Look, it's about I'm being a provocative. Shirts, I'm a shirts girl. Like, I love a good, well-thought-out T-shirt, and I, I like to make you, people I think. I don't want you wearing Drink Your Milk. I'm still upset about Hock Tui Girl. I can't handle this. Have you, you, this is not past your, your no. deal? Okay. What's that? I'm surrounded by, I got dicks all day, gal pal. You so do. It, this is maybe a flash in the pan, or I'm maybe catching it right at the top, and it's going to be everywhere by the time the show hits, right? If it's total flash in the pan, I apologize. Hawk Tui Girl is now the memes going around. Hawk, H-O-K, Tui, T-U-A, Hawk Tui Girl, because... Somebody that's was, a spit reference was right? interviewing somebody on this on like a basketball court or the sideline, and she was lit up drunk. And they're asking her like, "What does a guy really want?" She goes, I "Want you to do that hawk to it right on the dick." So I'm like, "Great!" So this poor woman who is now known for 
inventing the sound of her spitting on some guy's cock. Hock to it. So she's the hock toy girl. And everybody's like, you need to get you. So it's like the new Karen. You need to get you a new hock toy girl. Hock toy, hock toy, hock toy. Yeah. She's lost her job. I think she was a preschool teacher. Oh, no. <gasps> yeah. And it's like, what? <laughs> oh, and she went on. Like, that wasn't the only thing that she said. First of all, so that all I'm trying to say is, I don't want you wearing a drink your milk shirt. I don't feel like that's, uh, call me a slave to the patriarchy. I just don't feel like you need to be broadcasting, I'm gonna lap it up, lip, lip. Like, I don't like that. I feel like some things are private. No? Is that just me? Am I a prude? Because I don't want to wear, of- I don't want to wear a spooge okay shirt, t-shirt for myself that probably costs a thousand dollars. No. You're well aware that he waxes his back sack and crack, right? You're aware of that. He He's got not. to. He oh, he's a hairless any... cat then, naturally. First of all, back, I get. Crack, maybe there's some problems there. Sack, what is that's happening? That's got to hurt. Yeah, that's got to What are you hurt. doing? I, I mean, stop it. Stop Amy it. Amy would like to know. Stop it. <laughs> Write us at brilliantobservations at gmail.com and let her know what it is that you're doing that requires the back crack and sack back wax. crack and sack. Well, I do, I, I'm not saying that I'm against a smooth sack. I'm just saying, I don't feel like waxing is the way to go. It's like the skin of an egg. It's not because you don't have a lot there. Like, what are you doing? I mean, my God in heaven, I feel you for you. You don't have a lot there. I, okay, endorse. They don't I, I also around. think it would be wildly painful. Listen, darling, I don't know the last time that you've had something waxed, okay, for you to be talking about this like it's so casual. When they wax your actual skin, like on your body, regular skin, tough skin, face the world skin, skinny outside skin, right? Multiple layers of fucking dermis. It's ready for you to go. Your largest organ. It is Guess fleshy what? and... That's visceral. not happening down in your nuticles, okay? That stuff is protected, never sees the sun, shrouded in cotton the whole time. People get weird if you want to talk about it or bump up against it. They're so protective. That shit... You don't need to pour hot, melted glue on it, stick a piece of paper, and then rip it out from the... No. I, just even the visual. It looks like a cartoon. Arugo. You can see the two things stretching Hot away to-y. from the body. No. Hot No. <laughs> That's what you want. Just Hot shave to-y. it. Or maybe don't have gross, hairy nuts to start with. Or maybe. If you can control that. That's up to I, you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for that. That maturity must come much later. Okay. You're gross. Much, You're much gross. later. Not to connect these two dots, but I do have three children. They are all maturing at different rates and also right on schedule for who they are and what they need. And it is a joy to behold. The middle one has a summer job that is very high profile. He is become certified. Didn't even know you needed to do this to sell cars for the summer. He had to take all this. He had to go to DMV and take a test. What the fuck? I thought that selling cars was like any other business. Like if That's you're trying to cars. if you're trying to sell scalpels to surgeons, like I didn't think that you needed to be certified. I thought it was like you learn about it, you go on the calls if you're selling anything. I thought it was no, but you there's a whole fucking rigmarole. So we went through all that and then nothing. Nothing. Nobody was buying nothing. And they were, you know, he's looking at him like, "Oh shit, what now?" And then it happened. He sold his first car. I was so excited. He was so excited. And before he could celebrate, he sold his fucking second car in the same day. So I'm like, roller coaster mania. Let's get it going. So that feels good. And then the other one is with the girlfriend. And they're constantly talking. They're so kind of hilarious to me. Because they're both like worky people and you know, he's got his degree. She's directly heading into the fifth year. So she's basically got the degree as well. And the two of them are, I don't know. It's weird. They're like little yuppies. Even though they don't have any sense, they're way too young. They don't have anything of anything, but they're walking around like, mm, let's plan this ahead. And, and you know, we'll go it's away cute. for the weekend. And we'll, you know, and something's coming up in October. Let's get that on the calendar. And I'm like, you have a calendar? Wow. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, whole but thing. planning out till October at that it's age is crazy. great. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I love it's that. happening. It's happening in all the directions. And I feel like this is the summer of love, right? It's everything is in transition. Don't know what we're in for. And I am, I went to, I'm at the beach effectively, drove 25 minutes into Rehoboth Beach, which has a boardwalk, which has a fun land, which means there's carnival rides, which means I'm not getting on any of the carnival rides. But I watched my children up in the air, right, going back and forth in the giant pirate ship that spins around and tries to kill everybody and fling you out like so many <laughs> rocks. Okay. And the whole time I'm thinking, 
you just let the machinery move you. You know, your body is just going to go through and you're going to end up in the next space and it'll be exhilarating or you'll be thrust out and hit your face in the pavement. But either way, it's done. So, you know, not up to you. Wow, that is quite an outlook that you have. You're just going to get flung from the boat. Let's that's go. Very, that's very rapey technology. Like, uh, just let it happen. Just let no. it happen to you. Sit down, put the bar down, and let it happen. I don't feel like I was conjuring up rapey images. I'm just trying to say that there is a plan. If you on your face on the pavement, I, or listen, if you make drink it your to milk, the ground safely. I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> drink your milk. Listen, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you that... Things are continually conspiring in your favor. There are plans afoot that are moving you in the proper direction. Go with it. You don't have to predict or even know what's around the next corner. Move to it. Move through it. It's always in your best interest. That's summer of love. That's what I'm saying. And if it flings you from the boat, it's because the boat was bad. Like, that's all I'm saying. That's a great outlook on life. If it flings you from the boat, as this as this week, pro- just the day prior to this dropping, uh, my kids both get their LSAT scores. Oh, so if it wow, throws wow, you from wow. the boat, or if it that's that's great. That's well, they great. definitely get scores. I mean, they're they're definitely fine. It's just a question of how happy they'll be with like they're right. they're gonna meet all the thresholds. The question is, you know, did I get a perfect? Did I get a perfect plus two? You know, it's whatever the fuck. It's their their trying to meet their own targets not yes that is targets. what they are trying yeah. to set their own they're reaching their own goals this is not a team sport this right. is very much a solo sport you know how much prep you did for it you know what you're capable of because you've pre-tested or whatever so that's going to define the rest of um, I'm gonna say my life I mean summer or life and I want you also to know I'm sitting here right now in a house that might be as hot as the field that your kids so are on. So fucking hot. So they, fucking hot. We're having some HVAC issues. Oh, no. And, well, because, you know, there's a heat wave. So, so it stops working when you need so, it. So, yeah. So, we, but we went away this weekend. So, when we came back to a bit of a sweat lodge going on here, we thought, do we want to pick the dogs up and bring them into this? Do we want, what do we want out of this experience? So, I had a guy come and he was at the house and I looked at him. There was a Seinfeld episode where Elaine got a bad phone number, like a not a 212 New York phone number. I'm a 212. I'm a 212. Well, do you remember that there was a phone fix it guy who was there and she looked at him so mad that he gave her like a 242 and said inside her head, I could kill you right now and nobody no one would, would know. <laughs> <laughs> would know you were missing. <laughs> I felt that way a lot when I lived in New York because if you look at a building and and I think Woody Allen saw this too, which makes me mad that we thought the same thing, but there are so many stories in each one of those rooms, not to mention apartments, not to mention buildings all over and it. So for her to sit there and look at this guy and think, who would miss you? Like, you're such a dick. I was here with an HVAC guy who was telling me stories. And inside my head, I'm just screaming, shut up. I don't care. Just leave. Finish. Stop talking. And I thought, okay, we're going to work on our breathing. I'm we're not super gonna- kind. I'm a loving force. It's the summer of love. I could kill I this man good- and no one would know. Because <laughs> no it's so one hot, noticed. his body would disintegrate from the heat of the sun and the earth. I would throw him on the field of a turf lacrosse game going on. I know exactly where to bring his body for it to disappear. It's right on your kid's field right now. And I, I just wanted to explode. But following Murphy's Law in your summer of love, we are out of air conditioning right now. And they are doing the service for me, which is lovely. It's a great time to record. So I started out in the cold downstairs <laughs> and came up in the heat and it, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be great. But of course I did it is. Not, it already is great. The universe only has three answers. You already know this. I did not kill him. Well, tell your listeners the three answers. You know them. I do. It's do yes, you? Yeah, it's yes, no. Wrong. Or go fuck yourself. Those, that's not the universe <laughs> that you live in. Oh, you're, I'm sorry. You're, that's, that's, that's the alternate universe. You need to get on this timeline. Take me there. The universe only has three answers. And the answers are yes, not yet, and I've got something better. I like your answers better. <laughs> <laughs> I want your universe. I live in the Marvel universe. I want to live in your universe. Come over. The water's fine. It's 97 degrees. Oh, my God. Can you believe it? So we're here at this place. It has a hot tub on the deck, right? 
So there's water everywhere and the hot tub. And I was thinking maybe we could like open it and cool it, like throw ice in it or something and turn it into a pool, something like this, whatever. Yeah. Guy calls me the day before and he says, I just wanted to tell you, I'm sorry to be calling you. There's a leak in the hot tub. Blah, blah, blah. I, were you planning to use it? I know it's really, really hot. And I said, well, yeah, because I mean, at that point I didn't have a plan at all, but I said, yeah, because we're lacrosse people and they were going to get I in got there. Athletes. They're actually, they're going to use it like a, like a warm muscles. So they, yeah. my, all the th- I was like, that's a shame. And before I could say anything other like, oh, it's so disappointing. He goes, well, what if I was to offer you a hundred dollar a night credit? <laughs> And I was so flabbergasted. I was yes. silent. Whatever right? you say. Yeah. Then he's and like, I took too long to answer. And he went, w- would that, w- how does that sound? Because I hadn't answered. Because I was just so shocked. Yeah. And then yeah. I went, well. And I played it off. And I was like, it's hard for me to say yes to that because we're staying with another family and I would want to run it by them. But I mean, we don't really have a choice. It's broken. So I guess that's okay. I'll, I guess that's okay. I'll he's do like, you a favor he's like, okay, of crediting me. Okay, 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 okay. And maybe I laid it on too fucking thick because then four hours later he had called some urgent hot tub repair people and they repaired the fucking hot tub. <laughs> so it doesn't leak. So I didn't get my fucking credit. So I know, but you got a way to cool your kids off. I'm just and saying. I'm shoveling just saying. ice cubes in there. And I and I didn't tell the other family because I was like, nobody else needs to be crestfallen that I could have saved us. You know, each 50 bucks a night. We're here for a lot of days. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. In the end, as I, it's the way it's supposed to be. But it is nice to be in a house and not a hotel. We have others who are just doing the hotel train and they're eating that desiccated oatmeal breakfast every day and sitting Powdered in a tiny, eggs and- tiny, stinky room every day and trying to fight for space in the one micro apartment sized washer dryer in the basement that everybody uses. Like we, we're, we've got, we're washing wow. laundry, we're cooking eggs, we're, you know, it's, I'm happy. It's definitely better for what you are doing, but yeah. there are times where I want the hotel, I want someone to make my bed, I want someone to clean up my shit that part's bad we are literally (laughs) that part's bad we are literally on the water on two sides so you cannot go in and out of the house without flies there are just flies everywhere there are fly swatters already in every room because it's water that's what and in the house it's cold and there's food here so the flies are like fuck y'all i'm all 97 degrees outside i'm coming in there and you got strawberries let's go so that's I'm I'm so unaccustomed to flies. It's really I'm getting to learn. I'm getting to learn. But here's another thing. So one of our friends who is in a hotel for the duration and they brought dogs. So they have two dogs, two kids, and they're in a hotel room for the whole time. I'm like, really? OK. OK. So we saw them. We were out with them. Everybody's going their separate ways for dinner. And the dad looks at uh, Scott, guy we're traveling, traveling with and say, hey, man. I got to do some work tonight. What's a good, what's a good family mover for these two chuckleheads, right? They've got the lacrosse, lacrosse player and his younger okay. brother, younger stripes, brother. 48 hours. Um, Scott says family movie, show them team America. Do you remember that marionette movie where they're basically, it's nothing but swear words and lewd jokes and simulated sex scenes and, people throwing up on each other it is the not it's not okay for adult humans to watch this he said it thinking he was making a joke no this guy did not i got it it's so good it's so good dear okay so jimmy i don't know what the fuck he comes into the he comes into the part with the hotel room and he says all right family movie time and they loaded up they went and fucking found it loaded it up put it on the thing and he left to go do his work and mother wife Looks at it and sees marionettes and thinks, oh, it's a kid's movie. So she left. She left too. <laughs> so they came back in Fuck. 25 minutes later. And the middle schooler has got his jaw on the floor. <laughs> and he's watching this thing like, what? 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 <laughs> I'm talking. It is it, it is psychologically damaged. They're psychologically damaged now. So, so Jimmy. Was nearly, it worth it for you? Now you have got, to pay therapy. Got, Was it worth it? Nearly got killed by his wife. Right. I'm not involved in any of this. I just am, I can't believe this shit went down. So he called back and said it, last night in the middle of the movie, he called back and said, you're just not a good person. I don't know. <laughs> you're just not a good person. <laughs> I thought I thought we were friends. I thought something not was buddy, okay. You're hilarious. You're yeah. just not a good person. He's like, I thought you knew I was kidding. 
Yeah, I, I would never know. take a movie recommendation from Green's Burrito. That Thank is you. not a. I think I would, you and see that a part of it. I put on Jimmy. Also, yeah, who I would opens never up that do movie. That. What's going here, here? Like even the opening credits. If you can't get there, that this ain't for kids. Come on, come on. All right, Amy, I have a question for you. Let's see Besides, what happens. What's that big zit coming out on my forehead? Other than that, um, okay, you send your. Pick a child. You send your child to a friend's house for a play date. Yeah. Now, I'm sure this has come through your awareness at some point over the last week, but I am on fucking fire about this. Oh, my. And I I will explain what... I mean, obviously, you'll know why, but I also have a personal experience where... Well, you'll see. You send your child on a play date. He is gone for... Four hours, three hours, four hours, and you go and pick him up or you send your husband to pick him up. The next thing you know, you're crawling into bed at night. Do you have a good time? Yes, it was fun. It was great. The day's over. You've loaded the dishwasher. The counters are clean. You crawl into bed and you get a Venmo request for payment from the mother of the child, uh, from the mother who hosted your child for that four hour play date earlier in the day. Where did they go? No, it was at their house. The play <laughs> date was at their house, but they played She's with toys. She's running a cottage industry. Okay. They played with toys. There was a breakdown eventually when she said, are you fucking kidding? This came to me. This must be a joke. Played with toys, had a yogurt and two juice boxes, uh, sat on the ca- wear and tear on the sofa and love seat. She used the bathroom, that's water, uh, several times. Well, you gave her two juice boxes, by the way, so... I, what goes in must come out. She, regular wear and tear, like a $30, I think. I have to go back and look. That's, my objection isn't the amount. Uh, maybe it kind of is, but it's also the, what she requested payment for what she requested payment. And the fact that it happened in the, are you swatting flies right now? There's two of them <laughs> in here. Yeah. Okay. It's so She gross. requested payment for the child's play date. What, what, wh- mm, what do you do? And, the and relationship. Wait, then, then she took to TikTok and said, can we normalize uh, sending a Venmo request for play dates? Because this gets kind of expensive. No, no, no. We cannot normalize Venmo requests for play dates. Absolutely not. Are you hosting? Do I host your? Ca- uh, mm, mm, mm. OK, uh, before I, I freak I wanna, the fuck out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, the example is extreme. It suggests that this person doesn't understand the society in, <laughs> in which, which we live. <laughs> she and her children are operating. If, however, this was an event with a ticket, with an entrance fee, with a transportation, with a hosting cost, it would be best for all parents to discuss any required purchases prior to making them. Yeah. In lieu of that, it is acceptable for one parent to sort of identify what happened, right? So we went to the movies or we went to the amusement park or this entire day was about going to um, Disneyland or something with it. You know, we were going to go spend some money. Sure. And at that point, one of two things is going to happen. Either the opposite parent is immediately going to say, uh, here's, I, I sent child with money if he or she didn't present it let me settle up with you now right or how can I pay you etc and then that becomes a decision between everybody sometimes they'll wave it off sometimes they'll say yes and both are no fine. no no we got it we'll take care of it or, or, oh that, thank you that's or great the first parent can say so we went to Disneyland and the tickets were $40 each and so then the other person could say here's your $40 right? or I didn't want her going to Disneyland and and now that's we're not your fine. choice and the, yeah. the issue for so, me I mean but is the children that's very different than you're not a boarder in my home. Couch, two juice boxes, a yogurt. <laughs> I fed them lunch. Well, and, and it's so it gets back to the thing that we have discussed more than once. And I don't want to do the callback and take us down that road. I still don't understand people who go on Stop Facebook. There. Hard pass. <laughs> sure enough, who go yeah. on Facebook Marketplace and want to sell items for a dollar, for 50 cents, porch pickup, for $3 for a used coffee mug that I'm now going to, like, 
What do you need the three dollars for? It is it is nobody wins. Give it away or throw it away. So if you're charging for a juice box, you are so far off the road of where you need to be. That is super couponing your friendship. It's not how this works, right? It's it's not that's not economizing, that's not saving money, that's not normalizing being a good host. It's none of those things. It's somebody who is so fixated on money that you have itemized the cost of breathing air in your climate controlled home. That's kind of what it sounded like. As you, wear and tear on the furniture was an itemized I'm sorry. Were were they playing circus and they were jumping from then that's your job to tell them to stop because that's going to ruin your furniture. But it's just gross. It's just sadness. I think she took to TikTok to say, can we normalize this? And in the comments section, skewered. the answer was no. <laughs> the answer was not in her favor. And I don't think that's what she was expecting to see. You are on my side, the side of reality. Uh, honestly, we have we host people at the beach all the time. And never have we said, here, this is, we provided, How is there... Are you out of your fucking mind? And and although you hear, oh, you have a beach house, you must be fucking loaded. Did you also hear that I'm sending two kids to law school as best I can until the loans kick in? It, none of that's relevant. None of that but is that's relevant. that's the money your side culture, of it. But the, the, here's the reality. Your culture and my culture is very similar. When we were raised, mm-hmm. it was anyone in your environment is your family. You treat them as such. You give them better than what you have for yourself. That's the job of being a human on this earth. You do that. You're not actually worried about how much is in the coffers until it's empty. And then the only worry you have is that you can't protect Invite and people. share right, with right. others the way that you expect to, right? I, I wish I could give you something better than I'm giving you right now. That's very different than saying, here's your bill for my service to you. Like that's not how, that's, that's that crazy, exist. right? That that's a crazy is. Yeah. So what I'm saying is it's not tied to economics because no matter how much you have, if you are in a luxurious state, you still feel like you want to do better than what you have. So it's not it really isn't about the money. Oh, you have to sing that if you're going to say it. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Is that a lyric? It's not about the Money, 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 money. I didn't Thank remember you. what you were doing. I was Every like, episode, I try to get you to sing something. I don't know if you've noticed, but I, you terrible. set yourself up for that one. Typically. Typically. Suddenly. Yeah. All right. Life has new meaning. Nope. Different song. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I feel emotion and I, 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 I. Okay. Different song. I don't remember with you. Whatever, whoever that is. I don't remember who that is. Is that a liber a liberator Newton Johns? Sure, I, I think I went <laughs> Barb. I don't know. I went a different way, but I loved it anyway. And I always love your pronunciation of celebrities' names. Oh, I have stumbled into a new one now, and I can't stop it. I didn't mean it, Marishka. And I tried, the Hardig- first time Gay? that I said it, Marishka Hardigay is the girl's name. <laughs> so I don't understand why that's funny. I didn't pick her name, man. Okay, you just laugh. Nor did you say it correctly. Go ahead. What's the new one? It's her name. I said it once, then I tried to correct myself, and I repeated it wrong the second time, and then I thought, all right, that's pretty good. And now, (laughs) unfortunately, I refer to it as American conditioning. I can't help it. Everything is American conditioning. We turn on the American conditioning. Like we're in America and we have American. I think you're stroking out. <laughs> what's it's too hot. Is what's happening. You need some American. I need the American. Dish. Oh, my other favorite is I was sitting on the thing and I was really, really starting to wither and I couldn't handle it. And I said, "You look, everything's everything's trouble. I gotta get liquidated." And then and they're like, "That's not it. That's not what it is." But Hydrated I, and liquidated. liquids. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I, I like liquidated. that one. I, I like your <laughs> amyisms. <laughs> Amy, in a survey, 78% yes. of people survey said says. that this makes them feel like they have their life together. What is it, do you think, that people. 78% of people feel like this is this is the thing that makes me feel like I've got it together? Clean underwear. No? Not- I would endorse that. That is not it. All right. How about gas in the gas tank? I would endorse that as well. You are closer with that, but that's not it. Have their life together. Have their life together. Renter insurance. <laughs> wait that's not right because then what <laughs> what makes you feel like you have your life together batteries in the tv remote i um, think insurance just having insurance policies would make me feel like i had my life uh, together savings account that would make me feel good 
No. It feels like I have my life together. You have your life together. You have your shit in one bag, literally. Is it a bag in the trunk of your car? Do you have a car? It's it's about your car, actually. There is a car. If you have your life together, you have a reflective screen for your windshield to get it. Or maybe you have Sirius Radio in your car. Um, There's the a first holder? one. It, no, it's... Ha- I, I, I got you. I got you. They're um, that bad? Everybody in my house says, why don't you just fucking tell me what it is, mom? Like, they're why don't you? They're not. I was going to say they don't love you. That's an overstatement. But it feels that way. <laughs> it does you could feel tell that way. <laughs> yeah. I've also started bringing out those like card deck games and, and quizzing oh, the kids on things. And oh, they're like, no. could you just put your cards away? And oh, shut the fuck no. up? Yeah, You're one of those. She's got the purse bag with, with jumble games to bring out at the. Mm-mm, no. Wait, okay. I'll tell you about my new one in a second. The answer, dear listener, is a clean car. Inside your car what? being clean gives you a mental sense of. I've got my life together because I jump in and it's not a shit show. It's not the wrappers and receipts from my last 48 hours worth of bullshit. It is it is cleared out clean and I can now put my my mug in here. That's fair, I guess. 78% of people said that. That's not 78% of people don't agree on a lot of stuff. But here's the other thing. I used that was such a topic of conversation for so many people in my life. I kind of I have a distaste about it generally. Tell me. I normally keep my area clean. And what, I what what area what area is that? You got it. I like a clean area. So okay. I clean my areas. All me of too. them. Right? If it's under my it's if it's under my guidance, I like it to be clean. Do you so, knock it out of the car without picking up whatever you I were keep just my cl- my stuff clean and I also like to have I have a variety of car bags and they have grown over the years with need. And they're basically just fancified purses. But this one has these things in it. And this has creature comforts in it. Like there's eye shades and earbuds and, you know, hand sanitizer, all the things. The other one is basically like car safety. And then there's one that's a lacrosse bag and all the rest. But so they don't go rolling and ramicking all around the house. You know what I'm trying to say without using the right words. So I do that. But then I have other people get in my car and they treat the back seat and the floor of the back seat like it is a rolling garbage pit. And they throw and they get their turf pellets come out of their shoes and they drop things off their person and they leave their school book and belonging in there and they put their stinky stanky it's everywhere. It's gross. So my family always had clean cars inside. Outside was never really a priority. We didn't really launder the outside I mean you'd get it clean if it was something happened to it but it's not like there was a part of our culture where you're going to go wash the car every two weeks there are people like that not like my wait not like my father-in-law who get got for his birthday a two-month pass at the car wash and does not allow you to drive past this car wash without using it see and I bet you his car looked great well he's gorgeous Yeah. yeah and two of my jobs Two of my bosses in different states, completely different jobs, completely different industries, went out of their way to advise all of us equally, not me singled out, that (laughs) the state of your car is a reflection on you as a member of this firm. So that means the exterior and the interior need to be client ready at all times. Need to be client ready. You don't know if you're going to be transporting someone. If you're going to a pitch, you don't know if you're going to be parking next to the person you're going to. These are advertising agencies. But yeah, wow. Yeah, it's like, yeah. And I'm like, OK, that's kind of fucking weird, neurotic, but I get it. So I was never that way. And then I have these teen boys who basically drive around like Oscar the Grouch, a rolling, <laughs> you know, lighted refuse bin filled up with stank and disgusticate. It's grotesque, grotesque. So, and I hear other children do this because I've heard the parents say, I didn't pay money for this car. I will take it away if you don't get your all about it here because it's not how I like my things to go. But I don't feel like that make me feel like an adult. Maybe I just don't feel like an adult. I think my husband takes care of the outside of things, the outside of our house, the landscaping, the... Uh, the mowing of the lawn, and by taking care of, I mean finding the right other human to take care of. Like right, securing. But part of that, 
But part of that is just they're socialized, so different, and they always prioritize the wrong thing. Beyonce could be coming over to the house, and he's like, we better wash the rims of the car. And I'm like, she doesn't care about the fucking car. Vacuum the floor, right? Correct, correct, a thousand times okay. correct. So they're just putting their eyeballs where they think it needs to be. I got to prune these bushes. Why? Totally what? irrelevant. And, and you know what? Nobody uses the house. Right. The front, <laughs> she'll see it. <laughs> Nobody uses the front door of our home. What the fuck? Yeah. Everybody comes in through the garage. If you really felt that way, clean out the garage. Like right. that is, and once a year, every other, he does clean out the garage. And I did hear, wow, I'd marry him right now for that. I did hear something <laughs> cute. It doesn't really work in my house. My husband doesn't have the A, D, or H, or D. Right. None of those letters that, landed on him. I think that beloved, blessed state came from me, and I dispersed it freely and widely. But Thanks. I'm told for the husbands that do have this, the wife has now learned, don't ever ask them to do what you want them to do. Okay? Because they won't do it. Say more. Instead, instead, ask them to do something in the general vicinity of the real thing you want them to do. And it'll and annoy once they them? get there, no, they'll so they'll go off and do the thing you've asked them to do, and then they'll see the other thing that they were supposed to do before that they forgot about, and as a side quest, they'll do that, and they won't do the thing you've asked for, but you'll get the thing you wanted done just okay. by putting them in proximity of the task. So what you're saying is, I can say, sweetheart, can you go outside and change the batteries in yep. the ring doorbell? And while he's out there, he sees he's all gonna get rid of, of the, the weeds cobwebs. that were sitting right by the... Okay. And then he won't okay. change the doorbell ringer, <laughs> which is fine because you didn't need that anyway. I didn't need that But he's going to anyway. come back to you and say, oh, shit, I forgot to do that. And she's like, you don't have to. It's okay. Baby, that's to it. fine. And now you got a fucking favor in the bank. Bow, bow. Works twice, baby. I absolutely love this. It's These are it's pretty um, good. marriage tips and hacks. Dear listener, if you have some more of these, Amy and I would love to hear them. Write us. I already did this. Brilliant observations at Gmail. But find us really on the socials. Listen, Brilliant on Instagram. Brilliant observations. Brill up squad on Facebook. Squad. I posted this week a story. I don't post so much on my personal anything because I enjoy the Brilliant Observations socials. And that's where I like to, you know, take a peek at what's going on with your listener. So I posted a family photo, which I hope no one saw on my story because it is going to be my magnet, my family picture for this year. Our family was all together in one place and dressed up. And that almost never happens. If we are together, we are dressed down or undressed or hey I know I saw it coming I felt it fly out of my mouth and I got milked my way into that one sorry I would love for no one to see that picture it was a mistake to post it I'm so excited when your family is all together once they've dispersed across the country it's kind of a magical feeling and I am in a pocket of wildly grateful right now and I just want to share the grateful because I'm usually coming here and sharing things they did wrong or my fears for LSAT or the future. We had a pocket where the four of us were standing on the corner of a dance floor, murder on the dance floor, um, and we were dancing, uh, spinning, playing in finery. My feet hurt. My legs hurt. My back hurts. Everything hurts. And I would do it again in a fucking heartbeat. It was so amazing. So spend time with your family. Enjoy it because they're leaving you. <laughs> they are going. I do love that. And I love the gratitude. And the other lesson that I take from it is think about how you can invest in a future repeat of that event and have it even better by doing dance classes with your husband so that your body is in a better physical condition. You know, wearing high heels or wearing, not wearing high heels the next time you dress fancy so that you're there and you can physically be in the moment. I so frequently find my body doesn't behave the way my brain expects it to. And that is very difficult to get through and around and over in the moment. When I want to be dancing and having my heart exploding with the happiness and the joy and then my knee explodes, that's not great, right? So it really comes down to I am excited to connect and I'm here in shorts and I'm here in sticky weather and I'm seeing these ridiculously, you know, 
statuesque, godlike gladiator bodies all around me, not in any kind of a creepy way, but you can appreciate when you see people who are truly athletic, they're adults too, right? And I'm not among them. And I'm just really excited and curious for my body to live up to its potential for right now and to carry me through. Look at Lenny Kravitz, okay? I'd love to. to. I'm here to hurt you. Lenny Kravitz is 60 years old. Are you fucking kidding me? Unless TikTok likes to lie. Oh, it does. But besides that, are you kidding me? Somebody on TikTok who I normally listen to, he's very snarky, was putting up a picture and he goes, look at this glorious creature on a Monday morning standing here in jeans, nothing else, sunglasses and the love of God, you know, woo, coming through his every single everywhere, right? And he's got them real low so you can see what extra parts of his stomach he got that we don't get. Like all the things. The lines, the lines yes. that go right. With, the, with the, it's like, there's muscle there. All oh right. Can I touch it? So all that's <laughs> happening. Got right? milk. Yeah. And he's like, here he is at 60 years old. And what are you doing, fucker? Is he get really ready. 60? He cannot be. But also, is he? Hey, Siri. Here we go. How old is Lenny Kravitz? How old Lenny, is he? Lenny Kravitz is 60. I told you my TikTok don't lie. Holy shit. So if that's what 60 look like. I want it. I'm excited <laughs> at how I want great it. I'm going to look. Because guess what? When my outside starts looking like my inside. Oh shit. You people better hang on. Because this roller coaster taking off. And you'll be lucky to still be attached. Do you want to share where you are in your journey? Or just say wait for it. In my journey? Yeah. To get where you're going. You oh, are- yeah. In my journey, I uh, have got the active flapping chicken skin wings on my arms. <laughs> and Which means they were full and now they're emptying. I reached so. down and grabbed my calf. And it had the kind of, the kind of uh, you know, overstuffed lumpiness of some sort of like a down pillow mixed with cottage okay, cheese. Okay, my question was, you are <laughs> making, <laughs> you are progressing. It ain't good. It ain't good. It ain't good. It ain't good. You're no good. You're no good. You're no good. Baby caps of cottage cheese. Oh, my God. I'm going to say it again. Say it again. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so it's gross. It's gross. But I, uh, I'm i not actively doing anything in this way. I'm not getting bigger, but I'm not really getting smaller. Things are at a nice stasis and getting smaller, smaller, smaller in an incredibly slow way. If which I is was the healthy way. Which is a healthy way. But yes. here's, where, here's where I'm curious and excited for the summer of love to morph into loving myself, right? I love it when I connect the dots between caring for my highest self includes only choosing foods and choosing activities and habits that actually serve me physically, mentally, spiritually, me. So incorporating a daily exercise routine, incorporating healthy foods and consistently healthy foods. I don't eat poorly. I don't eat enough. I don't, what I need to be doing is really having a focused nutrition routine. I'm, I'm at this point, I'm putting a lot of energy, making sure that my son gets 90,000 calories. So I'm making a lot of food all the time. Yeah. And I don't really want to eat it all the time because it's constantly flying and flying and flying. So I'm not making bad choices, but I can optimize choices. And I've lived through times in my life where those levels of activity, when I'm rowing, when I'm consistently taking Pilates classes, when I'm in some kind of a competitive sport, you name it, I look better, I feel better, I function better. The consistency is the part that... I'm excited to adopt permanently. Consistently, yeah. Consistency has not been a kind of a permanent fixture for me. I've been consistently inconsistent. So I'm curious to flip that. Um, I think what's, what's good about what you're saying is, A, you're aware. That's, that's everything for me. Um, but the other thing is, it's the, t- it's the baby steps. Because the baby steps, even though you're not on that incredible plan of only feeding yourself with good, the baby steps are... Um, indoor, like you can, you can be consistent with those. Those I'm losing can- about a half a pound to a pound a week, and I'm not doing anything. I'm taking a, a medical. Uh, it's Trulicity is the one that I'm on. It's the one that's covered at least for now. They've yeah. changed the coverage again. They keep changing the rules, and uh, because the the insurance companies. These are incredibly expensive medications and the insurance companies don't want to pay for it chronically forever. So I'm on it now. 
They made me switch from the other one I was on. But what I'm saying is because I take that medication, I'm losing between a half a pound to a pound and a half, give or take, and I'm not doing anything. I inject myself with this thing once a week, and then I get on the scale once a week, and it, it's lower. I don't do anything. I don't exercise. I don't eat differently. I don't eat more or less. I don't, I, nothing. So imagine if I was doing a double up, then I would be having three pounds down a week or five pounds or who knows how many pounds. So again, part of it is I also am not in a sprint. I'm in a marathon. This is, this is getting my body ready That's to. That's the point. This yeah. is your, it's your, I used so to phrase trying, it to my yeah. kids that if the car we are buying you, sorry, um, or the car you have right now is the car you had to have for the rest of exactly. your life. How would you care for that car? Would you leave those wrappers in there? Or would you like 78% of society feel, feel like you you've got your life, life together if your I've car was I've said it before clean? and it really, it really helps me kind of keep it Say in perspective. Say it again. That's it's no one. good. It's no good. It's I, no good. When people who are trying to quit smoking and they say, I stopped smoking 81 days ago. And then the person says, well, when are you going to start? again and they said well never they said then why are you keeping track it's you didn't quit smoking 81 days ago you don't smoke that's how I'm looking at I kind of health that. that's how I'm looking at health that's how I'm looking at okay. weight loss as opposed to continually being in a cycle of a sprint to lose x number of pounds or a weight loss or this other kind of thing and instead it is a it is a perpetual state of optimizing health. It's a marathon. Right? We're in it. Yeah. We want so, to be so the best we can be. The optimizing health means there should be fewer pounds in me. Okay, I can do that. There should be better nutrition. There also be more activity. There also needs to be more joy, right? Come on, abundance. I'm Come here on, for Joy you. Luck Club. Let's I'm do open this. to receive. Let's go. Dear listener, what are you open to receive? Hey, oh. Hey, oh. Um, <laughs> I hope it's our next podcast and you let us know all about it. Don't get that t shirt. I want to support him, but I, mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, uh, it hits it on the nose or wow. the dick tip, depending on, <laughs> I mean, you can swallow, <laughs> you can duck, you've got other choices. Thank you so much for coming out and listening to us today. We hope, oh God, <laughs> I can't even say thank you for turning us on. We hope you turned you on in some small way. We love you guys and cannot to wait it. for yep. you. <laughs> Huck? Tui. We cannot wait to hock Tui with you next time. Uh, maybe, yeah, I can, though. But okay. And on that note, we're going to say bye. bye. You're about to get fucked in the mouth.